Hey, welcome back to another video for our Hero Maker. We're illustrating all of the different types of controls that people normally use on a data entry form. We're moving down here to the three triples of the speed, stamina, and strength. So the goal here is that we're going to have sliders that can change the value of their each skill here. But I'm going to add a twist that you can only put a maximum of a total of 100 total points. So you can balance the speed, stamina, and strength. So you can use something besides uh, speed, stamina, and strength if you like. Um, you can have endurance or intelligence or some other skill that is in short supply. And then you can balance it the same way that I'm doing with the math. So let's get started with the programming. So let's use this area down here in the bottom where we can put in our group of three sliders. So I'm going to start with a group box, and then I'm going to change its text to Stamina, Strength, and Speed. Okay, so now there are two different types of sliders that we can work with. Let's try this one here called an H scroll bar. So there's another type that we could use, and we come down to the uh, near tor towards the end, and there's an item called a track bar. So both track bar and horizontal slider are very similar. So I'm going to save the track bar for later. I'm just going to park him over there. But let's use the horizontal slider for now. So I'm going to take the entire width of the group box and assign it to this slider. OK, so you can see I have three horizontal sliders on here. I'd kind of like to have them to be the same height, so I'm going to do a so I'm going to use a shift key and select all three of them and then look for the height. So I'm finding size near the bottom here. And let's put in some numbers. So I'm going to choose 300 as a width and 15 for the height. And so they're all equal now. Okay, so I'm going to set up the speed, stamina, and strength labels. So these labels will only hold the word speed, stamina, and strength. I'll create another label to hold the actual number. All right, so you can see that I'm putting in the labels now, and each of these is going to hold the number. So I will assign 33, 33, and 33 for each of these values. Now, let's line things up. You can see that I have these three 33s. Let's see if we can arrange them. So if you look up here on the top row of the toolbars, you can see that there are different arrangement items. So if I choose a line left, they all align in the left margin. Now I'm using the arrow keys on my keyboard to shove them all to the right. So they are all lined up perfectly. I could probably line up the others as well. So I'm going to select the three labels and align them so that they're all left aligned. Let's do the same thing with our three different controls. There, so they're all lined up nicely. Now, if, you're, if your horizontal and vertical alignments are bad, you can also spread them out. So you can have give them the same width, and you can spread them across the same height, and things like that. So that it's another way to arrange your items. OK, so now the tricky part is, we're going to have some interaction now between the labels and the scroll bar. So let's uh, start by naming the scroll bars so that way when we start programming, we know which one we're doing. Okay, so let's give these each uh, scroll bars a name. So I'm going to call them scroll underscore speed, scroll underscore stamina, and strength. Okay, so they've all got a name now, scroll underscore something. Let's go in and start doing some programming. So the first thing is we need to add an event. So let's double click on our item. And we see when we double click that we have a, an event automatically created called scroll speed underscore scroll. So it's not a click event. We're used to click events for almost everything. This is just the scroll bar. So let's, uh, let's go in and put in here an update. So I want to update the label for my uh, speed. Oh my goodness, which label do I pick? Is it label one, seven? I don't know. Let's go and adjust the label numbers as well. Okay, so I'm going to use the uh, LBL prefix for labels. So LBL speed, LBL stamina, 
and LBL strength. So this will make it easier for me to program the value of a label. So let's come back into our code here now for scroll on this item, and we're going to put in LBL underscore, and now it makes more sense, speed. So the value I want to assign to this text is going to come from our scroll bars. So I named them scroll. Let's do scroll underscore, and the first one is speed. So we'll do speed dot, and I think it's called value. So the value of whatever is selected is going to be assigned here. Now we probably can't assign an integer to a text. So it says we have to do a two string method there maybe. Let's try that, two string. And now we've got ourselves a correct value. Let's test that out. All right, so now we've got ourselves a little scroll bar here. If I move it along, you can see that the value goes between zero and whatever I set the maximum to. All right, so I'm going to do the same process for the other tool scroll bars. I'm going to double click the scroll bar to create a scroll method. And then inside the method, we'll update the label that is associated with it. So we should see these all three working now. All right, so what happens when I start clicking on these scroll bars? You can see that they actually do move. So the initial value, it says is 33. That is not accurate. But after you've selected a scroll, it, is, it becomes accurate. Now I'm going to now update the three variables here and put them into our, our final product here. So let's double click on our event here for our button click. And let's put in some new control for our uh, different uh, abilities here. So let's assign each of these three new integers as a value of 33. So I'm going to now check to see if the value of all three of these uh, combined is greater than 100. If it is greater than 100, we want to show a message box that says, you can't do that. And then we'll prevent them from creating the hero. Let's take a look here. I've got a message that says, uh, you have not assigned you a local value to speed. Well, I put a comma in there, so, so it didn't allow me to assign all three of these to be equal to be 33. So let's put in a assignment for individual ones. Okay, so that's not the shortcut method, but it does work. We have speed, stamina, and strength now all at 33. So now we need to do some more checking, but uh, I'll leave that to you. So, uh, prevent the user from actually creating a hero. So let's see, I'm looking for my status message here, and let's put in our status for each of these abilities. All right, so we will add in the strength, the speed, and the stamina. All right, so now if we try to uh, run our program here, let's set the speed, the strength, and the stamina to be a little bit too high, and create the hero. And it does work. It says we've uh, set them all to be 33. So what's wrong here? They didn't get the numbers from our scroll bar. So we need to do one more assignment, it looks like. So instead of doing a 33 for each of these, let's get the value from our scroll bar. Okay, so we'll take, instead of 33, we'll take scroll speed dot value. Then we'll take scroll strength. And also we'll have to use dot value and scroll stamina dot value. And so these will actually get the values from the scroll bar. All right, let's try it out here. I'm going to scroll out a ways and give these high values and create the hero. So at this point, it says you can't do this. You're going to have more than 100 total points. But then we click OK and it creates it anyway. So it gives 35, 67, and 45 for my values. So you're gonna to have to fix that. So we can't get the hero created if the values are too high. Now here's another way that you could fix this. I've done it a very simple way, but what would happen is if you automatically dynamically change these. So if I scrolled past a total of 100 and this number became higher, we could automatically update these so that one of them goes lower or both of them go lower. And so that would be a good challenge for you is can you dynamically allow the user to only get to a total of 100 in the controls instead of allowing them to have so many maximums? 
Or at least you could do is change the color of these to a red if they're out of range. So that way when they all three get too high, they change the color or maybe some kind of a background color. And that way uh, you, the user doesn't get surprised when they click the uh, OK button at the end. So there are various ways that you could control the maximum of 100 for all of these three values. I'll leave those uh, challenges to you to figure out. You customize your app to make it look better than mine. But I gave you the very minimum solution here of how to do a maximum of, of 100 for these three values together. Okay, so let's move on to the next video. We're going to do some strings with dates.